What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering, and The Daily Wire just dropped their interview with Gina Carano over an hour uh, that has absolute uh, tons of um, delicious, delicious nuggets about you know her time on The Mandalorian, uh, the, the way she was treated. Um, and I want to talk specifically in this video about what I could only really relate to is like um disney's like communist ccp punishment of gina carano it's it's by far and away um not the only bombshell in in this interview but um i just want to run this by you all normal people and by the way if you're watching this video and you aren't yet subscribed Please help the channel out by clicking that red subscribe button down below the video. Or if you're watching this on, you know, BitChute, Odyssey, Rumble, whatever, I, you know, I, I put my content out on all the alt texts. So wherever you're watching it, uh, I hope today will be the day. Earn your subscription. It helps so very much. And it's really the only way you'll ever see new videos from me because YouTube never puts them in the search results. Because this is how Disney responded to Gina Carano fighting back against the mob. So we we now know, if you remember, really what kind of one of the earliest, and she mentions this in the interview, one of the uh, earliest uh, you know issues that started with Disney was the pronoun issue, or it was her opinions on the lockdowns, one of the two. And Gina had never come out to like disparage people that use pronouns. But her first interaction with it was people demanding she put hers in her bio. So I think any normal human, uh, the normal human reaction to somebody telling you to do something is to say no. Even if, and I'm not saying in this case it was, but even if it's like the right thing, somebody coming and demanding you do it, any normal person who has any kind of backbone whatsoever is going to re feel res reticent to that. You know, they're they're going to say, "Hey, easy player. Like I'll do what I want to do in my own time." And then like even if if it was like the right thing, then you're like, "Yeah, yeah, get out and as soon as they're gone, you do it." You know? Um because we all have egos. That's what drives a lot of this. But how Disney responded is truly truly bizarre. So Disney uh, comes and forces Gina. I'm sorry, I skipped a step. Twitter mobs coming after her, calling her phobic and all these other things simply because she doesn't have pronouns in her bio. Her response is to push back and say, okay, fine, I put beep, boop, bop, or whatever in there. Take that, losers. It was never like an actual dig at the trans community. She herself, I mean, I never thought it was, but she herself confirmed this in her interview with Ben Shapiro. Disney then, what happens is, this is kind of the first time people are calling her all sorts of names. So Disney, firstly, uh, her PR agency, I'm sorry, reaches out and says, oh my God, we have, to, we have to issue an apology. And Gina's reaction, like any normie would be, Gina's probably a normie in terms of this kind of stuff, you know? She's like, I don't even know what, what do you mean apologize? These people are just bullies online and I told them to sit down. Made fun of them, poked fun like, you know, any normal person would do. Well, then our PR agency or Disney or Lucasfilm, they get at some point they get on the same page. And they, they first of all, I, I don't know what happened first, but they demanded Gina Carano apologize. And they demanded she use their version of an apology verbatim. She said, no, I'm, you know, this is inauthentic. I don't think that, um, you know, you know, she mentions, hey, I've seen a lot of celebrities apologize. It always feels, you know, cringe um, and inauthentic. So, you know, let me write my own. And then they basically would had to go back and forth and back and forth with Disney narrowing down to just two words in her apology, uh, fighting over it and then saying, well, this apology isn't apologetic enough. That was Disney's response. These people are sick. Um, they don't want to work with you. They want to own you. All right. And if you're of the same political ideology, 
then this feels like you're swimming with the stream or with the current because you, you, these are things you're all saying and and um, it doesn't feel odd. But if you're a free thinker um, or you dare to question, suddenly you're swimming upstream. So they force her to uh, meet with some, some PR agency that had a particular wing that was just trans folks or something like that. And she met with them and... According to Gina, they understood what she said um, that no, no offense, you know, offense is never given. It's only taken, right? That she didn't mean any offense. It wasn't any kind of like rib on the trans community. It was just more about this bullies. And then these two people had, or several people, I guess, had then reported back to Disney to say like, okay, don't fire her. Or don't cancel her. It's a bad thing. Then things get creepy. According to Gina... Disney wanted her to meet with 40 members of the, I, 40 people of this like LGBTQ trans or specifically trans. It's, it's, it's basically 40 people in this group via Zoom so they could educate her. Meaning she basically, I'm not kidding. If you go look up what a struggle session is, that's what this is. Disney said, hey, you're going to get on Zoom with 40 trans folks and they're gonna you know give you the what's for now i i don't know i can't say what was in and this is the problem this is you know i have you know i guess you know statistically i have a lot of trans friends but that's really you know like three or four that i'm court you know that I'm, I'm friendly with and have been for a long time um it's just you know i live in the Midwest and it is what it is, but, and, and, th and they would probably agree with this. They don't want all this craziness. They just want to live their life, you know, and, and, and the best way, you know, they want to live their best life. They don't need all these people, uh, you know, making these big spectacles of things. That's like the tiny, tiny, tiny percent of that community. That is like the activist led most um, the overwhelming majority of, of folks in the trans community just want to be happy and live their life. They're not there to, you know, berate people who don't use the right pronouns or this. This is not a concern for most trans people. It is a concern of privileged trans folks uh, who don't have, you know, hardly any uh, problems that um, other, you know, they don't, they're not concerned with the problems of the trans community. They're concerned with pronouns on Twitter, right? Um so I don't know who these 40 people were or what agency they were, but Gina was like, nah, player, I'm not doing that. This feels abusive. And she's right. I don't remember if she used the word abusive or not. So I, it, it feels off because it is off, Gina. They, they wanted her to sit on Zoom with people and have them do, I don't know what, yell at her, educate her, re-educate her. That's creepy. Like in any other industry... This would be like a clear lawsuit. Like, what do you mean? What kind of crap is that? This person just works for you. Why are you trying to control what they're, you know, why do they have to also agree with you on everything politically? You know, she talks about too, that, you know, it, the 2020 election was the first time she ever voted. And um, it was a big year for her to kind of a, a political awakening, to started getting involved in things. And I know when I started getting involved in things, I didn't exactly know where the landmines were either. Um, there are just certain things that the candle's not worth the game. That's an old timey saying, but like there are issues like uh, that you can argue about on Twitter or make videos about that are really going to rile some people up. But there's also a ton of other issues that you can actually make some progress on. So, you know, I've started to try and avoid these landmines, right? Because we have a finite amount of time on this planet to make change, uh, to better ourselves and maybe better others. And if you just spend all day on these stepping on landmines, you'll never do that. And so you could say, well, why, why, you know, are you afraid? Yeah, I'm afraid that I will waste my time or like lose my career because I spent time arguing about a few random things. I think you all know, you know, like there's several topics that you just, it's not worth it. Um, and you know, she talked about also that 
the creative director of Lucasfilm. I mean, th- th- this what was what she was going through for putting beep boop bop in her in her Twitter bio. Meanwhile, Disney's saying, you know, it's not apologetic enough. You have to rewrite this. You got to meet with this person. You got to meet with that person. These people got to come to your house. You got to go to this restaurant with other members of the LGBTQ community, and they need to yell at you. Um, now, she did say everything, you know, the, the um, that the, the dinner was pleasant. And it, I mean, so, you know, it, I don't know what Disney's intentions were here. But they weren't pure. They sent a media trainer to meet with her. All these people are standoffish when they meet with her, uh, telling her, you know, this is how you're supposed to say. She also shared an interesting thing. She mentions another big story that would probably turn things around in the media, but she can't share it because it would sell out a friend. Um, That friend could come out in her defense. It's somebody that she'd gone to bat for, but they're also afraid of losing their job. That's how, like... Um, nuclear uh, or how uh, dangerous it is for people to stand up for Gina Carano in Hollywood. And I know as this story will settle down this week um, and she gets back to work, you know, Ben talks about this and this is something that I've known for a long time too. You know, I have, by the way, people in Hollywood that, you know, will talk via DMs who are, you know, not necessarily conservative, but just, you know, normal like, you know, center type of people. There are a lot of people in the center or even flat out conservative in Hollywood. They hide this because they know it's like the one thing that'll derail their gravy train. I'm not just talking about actors. I'm talking about directors. I'm talking about movie studio owners. I mean, come on. These people make more money than all of us. And one of the big things, one of the big reasons that people veer towards conservative conservatism is when they start making enough money and they realize how much they're paying in taxes every year. I mean, that's, that's, you know, primary, (coughs) that's why I always say, you know, I'm fiscally conservative, but I still consider myself very liberal and literally almost everything else. The idea that, um, you know, she also, Gina also says, Hey, Disney never contacted her. She found out that they were, tracking the hashtag fire Gina Carano trend on, on Twitter, somebody accidentally sent her an email where they were talking about her, talking about firing her, and she knew. If they hadn't accidentally sent that email to her, she would have never known that she was... Uh, the only communication she would have got about her firing would have been the social media post or, or on via social media. And that is just so disrespectful. She talked about how, you know, normal people are, you know, her and Pedro Pascal, very different politically, got along great on the set. That's how normal people act. You know, I have friends that are, you know, full blown leftists, but we can still shoot pool together and and play darts and have fun. Um, You don't have to make every aspect of your life um, political and, and, you know, with everything we know now in the context, you know, reiterating that the beep boop bop thing was, of course, to push back against people trying to bully her into it. Um, Disney, you know, forcing her to meet with all sorts of people. Uh, why? Just get back to work. You know, if you want if it was just about the social media stuff, you would just have a mandate that said, eh, you can't, you know, while you're working for Disney, you're not tweeting anything. Deal with it you know, or something like that. But it wasn't about that. It was about beating her into submission and getting her to fall in line with the same political views that the the corporation, which by the way is, you know, totally fine with everything going on in China, even thanking the arm of the government that covers up what they're doing to uh, the Uyghur Muslims and putting them in camps, um, uh, sterilizing their women. This is happening right now. Disney's totally fine to go there and work. They're totally fine to take all their money. They're totally fine to shrink black uh, uh, actors like John Boyega on the on the movie on the movie posters in China. But they also want to make sure that all of their actors and actresses have the exact same political point of view. Disney is one of the most evil companies imaginable. They now hold the keys to Star Wars, Lucasfilm. There's so much more. To discuss about this uh, this interview, uh, the, the the comments on Pedro Pascal, 
you know, um, the hypocrisy. There's just tons of stuff. Also, a ton of work uh, coming Gina's way. So I'll probably cover the second half of the interview on Monday. I hope you enjoyed this video, though. If you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel using the red subscribe button down below. And we'll talk to you again real soon.